EMC Networker 8.2 has enhanced Networker Snapshot Management to include support for NAS snapshots. In this demo, I'll show you how to configure a NAS filer for NAS snapshots leveraging the Networker Client Configuration Wizard. First, we'll start off by specifying the host name for the NAS system. In this case, in our environment, it is an EMC Isilon system. And you can see here there's a new NAS device entry in the wizard to configure a snapshot backup. Now we'll specify the various credentials that Networker needs to orchestrate and interface with the NAS system to create the snapshots. And as well as NDMP credentials that will assist the Networker server and storage node in performing NDMP rollovers of those snapshots to EMC protection storage, such as EMC data domain. You can see here that Networker has already reached out to the NAS system and has correctly identified it. And now we'll specify the specific uh, folder or volume on that NAS system that we want to back up. So I'll specify that here. Networker's uh, snapshot management for NAS provides for three different types of snapshots, local snapshots, locally replicated, or remotely replicated. So Networker can actually orchestrate, in the case of Isilon, the ability to remote snap a particular NAS volume. We'll specify the indexing um, intervals here that we want to provide for the Networker index database. And then specify that we want a new group created uh, in Networker as you probably know n groups are groupings of clients so we'll add this client into a new group name we'll call it demo group and we'll specify that uh, we want the group schedule to run in intervals of six hours and this is because over the course of a 24-hour period for this demo I'm going to create a schedule that does four snapshots over a 24-hour period. So we'll start the schedule at 6 a.m. and we'll run it at a six-hour interval, therefore creating the four snapshots over the rolling 24-hour period. Now we'll specify the actual snapshot policy. So we'll create a new snapshot policy and give it a name. And then below that, we'll specify the number of snapshots total that we want in a 24-hour period, as well as the number of snapshots we want to retain in a 24-hour period. So I can create four snapshots, but only specify that I only want to create and retain the most recent two snapshots. And then I can specify for rollover to protection storage whether I want all the snapshots to be protected or only the first or certain snapshots. As far as rollover goes, we can specify the NDMP transfer type. And now we've completed the wizard and we can run through the configuration summary. So we'll just verify here that all of our settings took. And then go ahead and create both the client and the new client group. And just like that, we've created a new client that you can see here. And we'll go in and modify the client properties because now I want to specify for the rollover operation which backup pool that I want to use. And you can see here we want it to roll over to data domain. So I have here a particular data domain system leveraging DD Boost. And that completes the configuration of the client running through the client wizard. Networker 8.2's NAS Snapshot Management provides for automated discovery and cataloging of all snapshots on the particular NAS device. As you can see here, uh, on the left pane, I've selected the Isilon system, and I'll go ahead and run a discovery. Once I do that, the list on the right will actually refresh with all the latest snapshots that have been created since the last time you ran a discovery. And you can see here listed all of the snaps that are created on that system. But what I want to point out is the managed column here. And you can see here two different types of snaps. Those that are discovered, which have been possibly created by some other third party 
uh, orchestration tool, and then manage snapshots, which were actually created by this networker server and are controlled by the networker environment and can be created, expired, deleted, etc. So you can see here, Networker provides for a robust cataloging capability. Now let's take a look at how we will do a backup and a recovery, leveraging the policy we created in a previous part of this demo. So I'll go ahead and start the policy group that we created. And you go to the monitoring tab in NMC. And you can see here that the job is actually started. And what this means now is that Networker is leveraging a lot of those credentials that we uh, specified earlier to interface with the NAS system directly. So let's go take a look and see what this looks like from the Isilon 1FS uh, management point of view. So we'll log into 1FS and go into the Data Protection tab, which will show us all of the snapshots listed in that particular Isilon system. And the list is going to be rather long here, so I'll go ahead and expand the window so we can get a good view. Um, but when I click on the Snapshot tab, we'll see a list of, of all the snaps that are on the system. And you can see here right away at about 9.55, which is just now the time of recording of this demo, that the snap was created as soon as I executed the policy. So we can see the unique identifier that Networker has assigned, as well as some details about that snap also in the Isilon UI. So we can clearly see that Networker has created the snapshot. And you now see that the rollover part of the policy, meaning the backup of that snapshot to a data domain, has just now completed. So we've actually completed the snapshot orchestration and backup rollover. So now let's take a look at how we perform a recovery from both the backup that's sitting on the EMC data domain for that NAS filer or from a snapshot that we may have of that same file system. You can see here in the recovery UI, I have both options. I can choose which type of backups I'd like to access. So first off, we'll go to the backup that's sitting on the data domain system. And again, this was backed up from the snap to data domain leveraging DD Boost. And I will basically go through and can browse the file system and select for recovery a folder, a directory, um, or the entire volume that I want to recover. In this case, I, I'm just going to recover the file. But rather than recovering from data domain, let's go ahead and see if we can recover from the snapshot. Networker has always been able to recover from data domain today, but in Networker 8.2 with this new NAS snapshot management, we want to be able to recover from the snap. Now, I can recover to the same host or a different host, out of place or in place, uh, but we're going to do an in-place file level recovery. So I'm going to choose to do it from the snapshot. And then I'm going to choose to browse and recover the save set rather than uh, recovering the entire snap. So I'm going to choose from the list of snapshots that I have in the Networker catalog. And you can see here the one we just created. And then I'm going to select the save set that I want to, to recover from. And now Networker is mounting that snapshot for me to be able to browse and pick out the individual files. So similar to the way I was able to do it through the data domain system, I can now go through and pick out the individual file, select the, the file for recovery, and then choose what I want to do with that file. Do I want it to go to the original path or some new destination path on the NAS device? And as the networker workflow allows, you can save a recover job. So we'll give it a name here and choose that we want this recovery to start immediately and that we want to save this recovery job for future runs um, if we so choose. So I'll go ahead and run the recovery. And as you can see from the filer that we have mounted here from a client, the file has been returned back to the file system. Thank you for watching this demo.